Hi everyone, and welcome or welcome back to the channel, where I bring you new videos every Friday. Today on History Calling, we're looking at the mysterious island of High Brazil. This island has nothing to do with the modern country of Brazil in South America, the name is just a coincidence, and was instead supposedly located off the coast of Ireland. You may not have heard of it though, or its erstwhile neighbour, the equally mysterious island of Maida, as, despite appearing on countless maps for around 550 years, they are reputed to have been phantom islands, which never existed in the first place. By looking at a number of these gorgeous old maps, as well as the published accounts of people who supposedly saw or even visited the island, I'm going to explore the question, is the island of High Brazil real? Or is this just one of many famous mistakes on old maps? I'll also explain how this story gained so much traction and for such a long time. Before we start, please remember to give this video a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications switched on so you never miss an upload. The description box below also has a link to my Instagram account if you'd like to follow me over there, and links to some additional sources that you can check out to learn more about High Brazil. The earliest source we have for the island of High Brazil, which was also known by a variety of other names, including Brazil, O Brazil, and simply Brazil, is its appearance on a map drawn by Majorcan cartographer Angelino Dulcert in 1325. The image you see here is a 19th century facsimile of a 1339 version of Dulcert's map, and on it we can see the Insula do Brazil, or Brazil Island, off Ireland's west coast, represented as a circular piece of land. We can see a similar shape and location here, on the 1387 Mapa Mundi, or Map of the World. I'd also like to draw your attention at this point to another island you see on this image, the aforementioned Meda, though like High Brazil, it too has a variety of names, including Asmeda. It isn't as widely known or written about as High Brazil, and isn't the focus of this video, but as it floated around the ocean in tandem with High Brazil, according to most of the maps we're going to look at, it's going to get a fair amount of attention today too. We now move on to this map from 1470 by Graciosa Benincasa, and my apologies if I mispronounce any non-English names during this video. Again, we see a circular island meant to represent High Brazil, and a roughly crescent-shaped island to the south, which is Maida. This map does have a noticeable difference from earlier ones, however, for High Brazil is now divided into two parts, with water running through the middle, a feature which would go on to appear on some, but not all, other maps. Moving on to 1525, High Brazil is still shown in two parts, with Asmedas, as it's called here, to the south and slightly west of it. The overall location of the islands also seems more southerly now, as High Brazil is to the west of England, called Anglia on this map, rather than Ireland. We see this change in location again in 1562, as the two islands, with High Brazil back in one piece, are placed in the Atlantic Ocean to the west of southern England and modern-day France. Incidentally, how amazing does that sea monster look? Maybe it's an escapee from Loch Ness. In 1566, there's a drastic change, as High Brazil and Meda are to be found just off the coast of North America. They won't hang out with the future Canadians and Americans for long, however, for another four years later, we find them back where they started, next to Ireland, on a map by Abraham Ortelius. Meda has had an identity crisis, though, and has changed names to become Damar, but it seems like the journey has been kinder to High Brazil, which has remained in one piece. Or has it? All this chopping and changing appears to have confused poor Ortelius, who doesn't seem sure what to do with these mobile islands. They feature in three different maps on his atlas, this one being the Europe map, but he treats them differently in each case. On his world map, Damar slash Meda is nowhere to be seen, and High Brazil is in two pieces. It remains this way on his map of Northern Europe, but Damar has now reappeared. For good measure, he's also thrown in the mythical island of St. Brendan, because it's not like this whole situation is confusing enough. Elsewhere, in 1580, as you see on this map by Moses Pitt, Jan Janssen, and Stephen Swart, the islands have moved again, and Meda, or Asmedas as it is here, has outgrown the name Damar. Things don't get any clearer as we head into the 17th century. 
In this map by Jodicus Hondius, published sometime between 1609 and 1633, the islands remain fairly close to Ireland, and High Brazil is in one piece. In 1626, John Speed shows them further south, off the west coast of mainland Europe, and by 1630, when this map is published, Maida is again gone. High Brazil is still in the southwest, perhaps in search of the missing Maida, but it's split in two once more and now resembles the yin yang symbol. In the same year, however, we have this map in which the two islands are both present. In 1638, High Brazil is once more whole and Maida has reappeared and returned to an earlier incarnation of its name as Maidas. Both islands have also gone on another trip, perhaps to rebond after their separation, and have floated out into the middle of the Atlantic, far to the west of Portugal. They're still there in 1667 on this map published in Amsterdam as part of the book Le Grand Atlas. If this is all a bit mind-boggling, bear in mind that I'm showing you only a selection of maps to feature one or both of these islands. There are many others from this century, but I trust you don't need me to talk you through them to get the point. The islands bounce around constantly, changing shape, location, and even name. And it's in this way that we hit the 18th century. And this is where I'd say things really start to go downhill for our favourite travelling islands. On this map from 1753, Maida is still there, albeit as a dot, but High Brazil has been downgraded to the imaginary Isle of O Brazil. It's almost like someone's noticed something fishy is going on here. Things only get worse as the century continues. By 1769, Maida is gone and High Brazil is just Brazil rock, though it has migrated closer to Ireland again. Cartographers are reluctant to fully let go, however, and we continue to see some version of High Brazil on maps for decades to come. It's only in the 19th century that the death knell finally sounds for both land masses. In 1846, the creators of this map didn't even get the name right, as they noted the existence of Basel Rock, with Maida much further to the south. Then, in 1859, we see Brazil Rock with the words highly doubtful written next to it. Finally, in 1873, it was removed from British High Admiralty maps, and that was that, for Maida was finally deleted too. Clearly the right decision had been made, as 21st century satellite images of Ireland and the Atlantic, of which this is just one example, prove once and for all that there's nothing out there you won't find on a modern map. So much then for the cartographical evidence for the existence of High Brazil. What about the documentary evidence? One of the reasons a belief in High Brazil persisted for so long was that stories about it have been appearing in manuscript and in print for centuries, in which people claim to have seen or even visited it. In an account which cannot have been written later than 1476, because the author, Spanish chronicler Lope Garcia de Salazar, died in that year, High Brazil is even credited as the final resting place of the legendary King Arthur. De Salazar, in a reworking of a 13th century work called the post vulgate Roman de Graal, or Romance of the Grail, records, And it is said about this King Arthur, and the English now still say it, that Morgie and his sister took him to the island of Brazil, which is 25 leagues off Cape Longanius, which is in Ireland, and that she enchanted that island so that no ship can find it, for she was very knowledgeable about enchantments, which Merlin showed her, thinking to have her as his beloved, and that both are alive there. And their being alive is nothing to be believed, but there is no doubt that this island is there, and that it is enchanted, for all the mariners find it on the charts that they use to guide themselves and seal the seas, which were made at the beginning of the world, much before this. And the English say that that island can be found if the ship can see the island before the island the ship, for a vessel from Bristol, which is a city in the southwest of England, found it one dawn, and not knowing that it was it, took on there much wood for firewood, which was all of Brazil, took it to their owner and, recognising it, he became very rich. He and others went in search of it and they could not find it and sometimes ships saw it, but due to a storm could not reach it, and it is round and small and flat. The reference to Bristol seems accurate, for we know that from at least 1480, and earlier if de Salazar was correct, there were a number of expeditions to find High Brazil which left from that city. One source says that on the 15th of July that year, the ship of John J. the Younger began a voyage from the King Road of Bristol to the island of Brazil, beyond the western part of Ireland, to traverse the seas. 
In a letter most likely sent to the famous explorer Christopher Columbus in the winter of 1497-98, to his correspondent Johann Day, also known as Hugh Say, and probably the same John Jay mentioned a few seconds ago, discussed a recent sailing expedition by Italian navigator Giovanni Caboto, which was patronised by Henry VII of England, and which had recently returned to Bristol. Having discussed some land which had been found, Day continued, It is considered certain that the cape of the said land was found and discovered in the past by the men from Bristol, who found Brazil, as your lordship well knows. It was called the island of Brazil, and it is assumed and believed to be the mainland that the men from Bristol found. Mere months later, on the 25th of July, 1498, the Spanish ambassador in London, Pedro de Ayala, wrote to King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain that, I believe your highnesses have already heard how the King of England has equipped a fleet to explore certain islands or mainland which he has been assured certain persons who set out last year from Bristol in search of the same have discovered. I have seen the chart made by the discoverer, who is another Genoese like Coulon, de Ayala is possibly referring to Caboto here, who has been in Seville and in Lisbon seeking to obtain persons to aid him in this discovery. For the last seven years, the people of Bristol have equipped two, three, four caravels to go in search of the island of the Brazil and the seven cities. According to the fancy of this Genoese, the king made up his mind to send vessels, because last year he brought him sure proof they had found land. The fleet he prepared, which consisted of five vessels, was provisioned for a year. So at the close of the 15th century, there was still a strong belief amongst mariners and even royalty in the existence of High Brazil, and numerous expeditions had gone in search of it. As the years went by, though, no indisputable evidence of the island was found, and later written sources which mention it are usually no longer rooted in fact. In an 1831 book entitled Irish Minstrelsy, the author claims to be quoting from an unpublished manuscript called A History of Ireland. This was supposedly then stored in the library of the Royal Irish Academy in Dublin and written in about 1636. In it, an island out at sea is described as being. On the west of Connet, and sometimes is perceived by the inhabitants of the Ulis and Iris, it is also said to be sometimes seen from St. Helen Head, being the farthest west point of land beyond of the haven of Calbeg's Donegal. Likewise, several seamen have discovered it at sea, as they have sailed on the western coasts of Ireland, one of whom, named Captain Rich, who lives about Dublin of late years, had a view of the land, and was so near that he discovered a harbour, as he supposed, by two headlands on either sides thereof but could never make to land, although when he had lost sight thereof in a mist which fell upon him, he held the same course several hours afterwards. This I am bold to insert, by the way, because I have heard a relation hereof from many credible persons, and particularly from the said Captain Rich. Also, in many old maps, especially maps of Europe or maps of the world, you shall find it by the name of O Brazil under the longitude 3 degrees 0 minutes and the latitude 50 degrees 20 minutes, so that it may be those famous enchanters now inhabit there, and by their magic skill conceal their island from foreigners. Yet this is my own conceit, and would have it taken for no other. Without being able to view the 1636 manuscript, which is supposedly the source of this story, there is really no way to verify what it may have said or when it may actually have dated from. I did run a quick check on the Royal Irish Academy's manuscript catalogue, but didn't see anything matching the description of this supposed item. If this account seems fanciful, things only got worse afterwards. In 1684, Irish writer and playwright Richard Head published the first of two fictional accounts of High Brazil that would lay the basis for many of the myths about the island repeated ever since. In the first, The Western Wonder, or O Brazil, an Enchanted Island, Head wrote that the ancients had known of the existence of High Brazil, and that he had heard tales of it from sailors who had seen and tried to reach it, but found themselves unable. He therefore suspected the island to be enchanted. He wrote that it was home to men of a prodigious stature, who as they moved looked like walking oaks, whose shaggy, bushy hair outvied the spreading of their leaved, branchy tops. There were infinite numbers of terrifying-looking beasts on the shoreline, too. The entire island was also prone to disappearing into mist and thunderstorms. 
The author, who's writing fiction, remember, so he's not really claiming this, says that he later dreamt of the island and met there a good man who was his guide and who led him safely through a multitude of devils and spectres. Spurred on by this dream, he set sail for High Brazil on the 9th of October 1672. Though he saw the island, a great storm prevented him landing there and caused a leak in his ship, forcing him and the other men to set off in a lifeboat before they were picked up by another passing boat. In 1675, Head published a second, very different account of High Brazil, which is perhaps the most famous supposed description of it, and like the previous book, often mistaken by modern commentators for a genuine primary source. Just look at some other YouTube videos on the island and you'll see what I mean. This short book is entitled O Brazil, or The Enchanted Island, being a perfect relation of the late discovery and wonderful disenchantment of an island on the north of Ireland, etc. It's presented as a letter written on the 14th of March 1674 by a William Hamilton of Londonderry, also called Derry, to his cousin. The character of Hamilton writes that, having often heard stories of the island's existence and dismissed them as fancy, he now knows that it was enchanted, but that that enchantment has recently been broken. He's certain of this because he's spoken to Captain John Nisbet, who told him that just 12 days earlier, on the 2nd of March 1674, he stumbled across the island with his crew after it appeared out of a mist. There, Nisbet and his men at first found nothing but animals, including black rabbits, and an abandoned castle. Only after they had lit a fire on shore did humans appear. An old man then told them that they were on Obrazil, where his ancestors had once been princes, until an evil necromancer put the island under a curse, which meant that it couldn't be seen. The curse had now worn off, and once good Christians lit a fire on the land, he and the other people on it were able to communicate with them. Nisbet and his men were then entertained, showered with gifts, and sailed home. A day later they were back in Ireland, where they showed off their new treasures before taking others back to the island who were just as well treated. This is where the pretended letter from the imaginary Hamilton finishes. If nothing else, we must give Richard Head credit for his creativity. But the continuing belief in the island was not all his fault. Other authors also wrote about it without explicitly saying that it was a legend. In 1684, the Irish writer Roderick O'Flaherty asserted that, From the Isles of Arran and the West Continent often appears visible that enchanted island called Obrazil, and in Irish, Beg Ara, or the Lesser Arran, set down in cards of navigation. Whether it be real and firm land, kept hidden by special ordinance of God as the terrestrial paradise, or else some illusion of airy clouds appearing on the surface of the sea, or the craft of evil spirits, is more than our judgments can sound out. There is, westward of Arran, in sight of the next continent of Ballinahinsey barony, Scared, a wild island of huge rocks, the receptacle of a deal of seals thereon yearly slaughtered. These rocks sometimes appear to be a great city far off, full of houses, castles, towers, and chimneys, sometimes full of blazing flames, smoke, and people running to and fro. Another day you would see nothing but a number of ships with their seals and riggings, then so many great stakes or reeks of corn and turf, and this not only on fair sunshining days, whereby it might be thought the reflection of the sunbeams on the vapours arising about it had been the cause, but also on dark and cloudy days happening. There is another like number of rocks called Carrick on the same coast, whereon the like apparitions are seen. But the enchanted island of Obrazil is not always visible as those rocks are, nor these rocks have always those apparitions. O'Flaherty goes on to claim that he knows of a man, then still living, named Murrah Olay, who claimed that he was kidnapped in April 1668 and taken to High Brazil, and that ever since the experience, Olay has been a practicing doctor, despite having never studied medicine before that. In 1752, another clearly fictionalized account of the island appeared, entitled A Voyage to Obrazil. In this, the island is presented as a submarine land, only accessible by boring a hole in one's boat, then holding a piece of burning oak, which prevents the boat being swamped and the occupants drowning while the vessel travels underwater to Obrazil. In 1786, yet another book appeared, by Charles Valancey, in which he claimed to be quoting an Irish legend that parts of the island of Ireland had been lost to the sea, but would sometimes resurface in different areas. He wrote, 
On the northeast of Ireland, this resurging part of the island is called O Brasil, and corruptly, O Brazil. Stories about how Brazil were on a roll. In 1820, author John Purdy published his book, Memoir Descriptive and Explanatory, to accompany the new chart of the Atlantic Ocean and comprising instructions general and particular for the navigation of the sea. In it, he had this to say about High Brazil, which he called Brazil Rock. M. Bellin, in his memoir of 1742, states that this rock is marked in latitude 51 degrees and longitude 19 degrees 30 minutes from Paris, according to Briage, hydrographer, and Lane, a pilot. It has been variously represented in different charts, although its existence has been doubted. Messrs Verdun and Borda have added to their remarks upon this rock that they do not believe it to exist. It was, however, seen in the year 1791 by the company and master of an English merchant ship, the commander of which favoured the editor of the present work with a description of it, stating that it is really a high rock or islet, apparently bold too, and to which he passed so near that he could have cast a biscuit on shore. The longitude, according to his computation, was about 16 degrees west, but we suspect that it is rather more the westward. The other sources Purdy mentions, including Bellin's 1842 book and Verdun and Borda's work, I have unfortunately been unable to get a hold of. But here, via Purdy, we have a story of someone who claimed to have seen High Brazil as recently as 1791, 29 years before this work was published. Purdy is sceptical though, and his doubts were increasingly shared by others. In 1892, the writer Sir Daniel Wilson noted that, the fancy of lands beyond the ocean perpetuated itself in an imaginary island of Brazil that flitted about the charts of the 14th and 15th centuries with ever-varying sight and proportions, till it vanished in the light of modern exploration. High Brazil still had the power to attract believers, though. In 1912-13, Irish scholar Thomas Johnson Westrop, in an article published in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Irish Academy, recorded that the people of the Aran Islands claimed that High Brazil only appeared once every seven years, and that he had been told by fishermen in County Clare that they had seen it, but that those who tried to reach it died. Westrop then contended that, I myself have seen the illusion some three times in my boyhood, he was born in 1860, and even made a rough coloured sketch after the last event, in the summer of 1872. It was a clear evening with a fine golden sunset, when, just as the sun went down, a dark island suddenly appeared far out to sea, but not on the horizon. It had two hills, one wooded. Between these, from a low plain, rose towers and curls of smoke. My mother, brother, Ralph Hugh Westrop, and several friends saw it at the same time. One person cried that he could see New York. Note that Westrop does call this an illusion, and that none of the events happened when he was any older than twelve. In fact, he goes on to say that he believes the island to be non-existent, and the result of mirage and fog bank. This brings us on to the final portion of this video, which is how can we account for so much evidence of High Brazil, and indeed for Maida. A few explanations have been offered to try to square all of this conflicting evidence. Some have speculated that High Brazil was in fact Porcupine Bank, which is an underwater shelf located about 150 to 200 kilometres off the west coast of Ireland. It mostly sits about 250 to 300 metres below the ocean's surface, though at its shallowest it's about 145 metres beneath the waves, and comprises an area of over 40,700 square kilometres. It's named after the ship that discovered it, the HMS Porcupine, rather than the creatures of the same name. The theory goes that it used to be above the waterline, only to disappear beneath it, Atlantis style, due to rising sea levels, but only after having been allocated the name of High Brazil. The obvious problem with this is the huge rise in ocean levels which would have been needed to submerge this shelf, plus the fact that it was discovered in the 1860s and some reports of High Brazil post-date that year. A second idea is that other islands and rocks were mistaken by some disoriented sailors for High Brazil and or Maida, entered onto maps and charts, and then copied by later cartographers. For instance, if caught up in fog and unable to see mainland Ireland, it wouldn't be that difficult to take one of the Aran Islands off the coast of Galway for such a place. I'd also like to introduce you to Bull Rock, 
a circular rock off the coast of Cork with water running through the middle of it. Remind you of anything? Third, it's even possible that these sailors, particularly those sailing in the 15th century when Europeans' knowledge of the North American continent was in its infancy, having been out on the open ocean for weeks or months at a time, stumble across the modern-day United States or Canada without realising just how far west they travelled. Certainly the differing descriptions and depictions of High Brazil's appearance suggest that in those cases where a real sighting of something was reported, different people were in fact looking at different land masses. Fourth, and this is the simplest explanation, I suspect some stories of people seeing High Brazil were invented by those seeking attention and perhaps even money.